machine will have eyes, ears and a voice. Welcome to the overview of the Sony PMW350K. Now, this is a two-third inch chipset, which basically means you get low noise, low lighting, and everything you could wish for, shoulder mounted as well. Now, rather than me prattle on, let's have a look around the camcorder itself. The beauty of this camcorder is it's solid state, so it takes the S by X card as you can see there. You have slot A, slot B, and you have slot select here. So it's just a matter of that comes back very easily. Pop your card in, in this case slot A, put it down, and that's you ready to shoot. Down here we have the usual connectors, time code in, gen lock in, time code out, video out, and that's a that's a composite video out, and an HDMI out. HDMI is very useful because not an awful lot of monitors, um, unless a broadcast spec, have actually an SDI uh, connector. So to have this HDMI out is very useful indeed. Okay, in the back of the camcorder, you've got all these wee, these wee guys uh, keeping everything nice and clean and dust free for you. Um, what you've got in here is uh, you've got Firewire, you've got SDI out, you've got a remote that you can plug a remote control in there. Um, you've got a channel one, channel one, channel two, and you've got a five pin, a five pin out. Now that's standard, the five pin out standard if you're going to uh, a sound mixer, an external sound mixer that see your sound man would have. And uh, up here you've got a uh, high rows, which um, you've got your four pin power, and under here you've got your headphone jack. Um, you've got line, mic, and mic plus 48 volts, channel one, channel two. So you've got everything you, you could possibly need in connector wise. And the business side of the camcorder, if we just take this, these flaps down, uh, reveals all these switches and buttons. Um, and the, the, obviously you've got the pots for your sound controls. You know, you can have them in any way, front, rear, wireless. Um, there is a wireless uh, slot at the top of the camcorder. If you've got one of these fancy uh, radio mics that slot into the camcorder, it's actually powered by the camcorder. You can have a radio mic slotted in there. Um, that that's uh, a menu button that gets you into the menu but there is a button further down the camcorder you can use for the same sort of thing so that you don't need to have these open so that's the that's the main part of the business side of the camcorder just above the switches you have the um, the LCD and uh, gives you time code media A and B, battery condition, and obviously your audio levels, channel one, two, three, and four. Uh, looking at the front of the camcorder, uh, you'll notice to the left-hand side, we have the filter wheel. Um, basically, one's clear, two's a quarter ND, three's a sixteenth ND, and four is a sixty-fourth ND. Um, beside that you've got a colour temperature switch. Now, basically if you put your camcorder on to say preset and it's at 3200 Kelvin, if you find you're outdoors and uh, you can press that button and it'll switch over to 6400. So, absolutely great feature. You've got the assign buttons here, um, you know, button one, two and three. Um, basically you can assign them to be whatever you like. Um, uh, then you've got the monitor switch, uh, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 and channel 4. Now obviously you're not going to be able to hear all four channels at the one time. That's where the, the wee switch at the bottom helps you. You can either choose channel 1 and 2 or, or a mix. And if you switch over you'll hear channel 3 and 4 or a mix. You've obviously got um, a pot here for your alarm. 
Now your alarm basically being if the battery starts to go down, uh, there, will, there will be a, a, a bleeping noise. Um, and down below that again, you've got your monitor level for your headphones. And obviously, if, as you can see in the right hand side there, um, you, you, it, you've got a speaker in the side of the camera um, if you forget to bring your headphones. As you can see, we've got the assign switch, the gain, output and white balance. Um, and under this wee flap, um, that's where you have your, your, you can switch your menu on, your main menu, and you can come out of your main menu by using that switch. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and also down here, you've got your on and off switch. Um, there, once you're into your menu, um, your menu is driven by, you can go up and down and you can also choose things as well by pressing that button. Um, great feature. And here you have your white balance and black balance switch. Okay, to the front of the camera you've got various switches here. Um, record start, uh, shutter, uh, mic level, which is a very useful feature, and uh, auto white, auto black. As you can see, the viewfinder has the usual peaking, contrast, brightness, Mirror, um, now effectively that switch allows you to flip the picture um, if you're using something like a 35mm adapter. You have the display on and off, zebra on and off, and tally, high, low and off. And if I press the button, the record button, then you get the, the red tally light coming on. This is probably the first two third inch camcorder to come with an autofocus lens. So effectively, in the position it's in just now, it is autofocus, but to get it into manual mode, you just pull that flange back there, and that's you in manual mode. And basically, it acts like a normal manual lens. Um, you've got these, obviously, these switches up here. You've got the macro switch, uh, autofocus on and off, and push for autofocus. Um, I actually think it's a very good feature. Um, I suspect most professionals will not use the autofocus, but, you know, it's there if you need it. The hand grip on the lens uh, has the usual. Uh, you have a, a switch which goes from manual iris or auto iris. If you're in manual iris, which it is at the moment, you can push for auto, as you can see there. You have a rocker switch, um, which is very smooth. And at the top there, you have a return video button. Now, I've actually assigned that so that when you press the button, um, it gives you the last clip and I will show you how to do that in the menu. If you want to make the return button um, to be able to review a clip, basically you go into menu, assignable switch, uh, go down to return and choose record review, which is fine. The next stage you would do would go down to what they call maintenance down to camera config in there you have a record review now you can have it three seconds ten seconds or clip but i would prefer to choose clip because i could show my client the, the clip we've just shot and that's how you set it up Inch Preston Media. the question in everybody's mind is archive now, as far as the 350 is concerned, you've got various options. Um, you've got the normal S by X card. Uh, now, that comes in price-wise at just over £500 for a 32GB card. Uh, you've got the new SB card, which is slightly cheaper at just over £430. Um, that's uh, better. But um, I was under the impression that these cards, these newer cards, were going to be a lot cheaper. But I have been told that there was a price increase. Um, so they're not as cheap as we all thought they would be. The other way of doing it, we may be using the MXM adapter with the SDHC cards. Now, what I was told today was that um, they've changed the pin configuration on the 1R and the 350. So the older cards they reckon they don't work but i'm actually recording with the mxr card which is an older type of card uh, as we speak so it does work um whether it's reliable on a regular basis i've no idea but i know that the boys over in australia are coming out with a newer style card 
um, which will definitely work with this and the One R. So um, that's good news because now you're talking, say, forty pounds for the adapter and thirty pounds for an SDHC card. That starts to make things a bit more sensible. Um, the other version, the other way of doing archive would be to go into something like a nano flash. Nano flash is a good idea, especially if you want the the, the better uh, bit rates. Um, but you're looking at just over two thousand three hundred pounds for the nano flash itself, plus about sixty four pounds for a sixteen gigabyte card, which is up to about sixty megabytes a second. So the nano flash is certainly, if you're going the broadcast route, you would definitely need to go for a nano flash, um, plus your sixteen gig cards on top of that. Um, so 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 that's basically your choice as far as archive is concerned. Okay, just a wee bit of the background here. On the right hand side we have a 500 watt LED light reflected and on the other side um, we have a 50 watt key light. So, the Sony PMW350, this is at 0 dB and I can assure you those pictures are steady. There is no shimmering, no nothing. This, on the other hand, is the EX3, and uh, obviously at 0 dB, the pictures are um, very good as well. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change the way I do things. This is still the PMW350, and that is at 0 dB at 25% reflected light. Um, and this is 25% at uh, 45 degrees reflected. Now, this is... This is dark, take it from me, this is dark at 9 dBs and this is a stunning picture. Now we have the 350 and this is 9 dBs. The same picture, just a, a basically a close-up of the baby's face. And the next picture you're going to see is the EX3 under the same circumstances. And as you can see, or possibly not see, but I can see, there is a fair bit of noise there. It's not as bad as I was expecting, but there still is noise. There's uh, two problems when you do a news story. Basically, you've got to do it quickly. Um, and half the time you've got to do it with uh, available light. Um, now that can pose a lot of problems in itself, which is possibly why when you've got black and white viewfinders you sometimes find that the colour balance is all to pot and that's why you see a lot of uh, bad white balance news stories. But with the advent of the new high resolution colour viewfinders like the 350, there certainly would be no excuse for a bad colour balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a 1 minute 30 seconds news story um, with available light, camera itself, tripod and a shotgun microphone. The 15th of August you left and then you found yourself in South Africa. Now you woke up the next day but you weren't too enamoured with, with the night time. What was that all about? It was the lions, the sounds were just out of this world. It was like literally living in Jurassic Park. Like the sound is just, your paper thin walls and then they just like you're 20 feet away from big lions, big tigers across from each other till about half two in the morning. The one thing that would make this part of my trip perfect, like I love tigers, I'm obsessed with tigers, is if I got to see a, see a baby Siberian tiger. And they were like, no, there's there's no way of it happening. We don't do that here. We breed white lions and um, it's never happened before. And the chances of seeing a baby Siberian, more chance of winning the lottery. Um, 24 hours, literally the next day, the one of the trucks comes flying up the hill. Everybody's running outside thinking, oh, somebody has put his hand in and the lion's taking it. So we all run outside and sure enough, he gets out of the van with this basket in his hand and baby Siberian inside it. Or just, everybody just turned and looked at me like, what the hell? <laughs> I just did, they're like, I uh, really wish I'd said I want a lot of money or I need a lot of money, but... <laughs> Then the next day another tiger came, like he clearly no listening, but um, it was surreal, just that was it. Like, there's like less than 400 left in the world. I mean, and not only did I get to see one, but our jobs there were to look after them. Here's the latest update as far as archive is concerned. 
Um, I did mention earlier about all the various ways you could you could archive, including the SDHC cards, but I didn't go into that in depth simply because I didn't really know how the SDHC card would perform in the 350. Um, if you use the older MXM adapter card, basically it doesn't work. But amazingly, if you use the MXR card, um, it works flawlessly. And I have now recorded four 16 gigabyte Transcend Class 6 cards with the MXR adapter. So it does work and it means that for £30 for an SDHC card, that is good low budget archiving. So have I anything about this camcorder that's negative? Um, no, not a thing. Apart from probably the, the lettering on the box itself. You know, if I were a camera manufacturer, I would suggest that the L would stand for lens and the K would stand for whatever. But you know, L to me means lens. So on the box, when it says K, you get the lens. And when it says L, it's less lens. <laughs> so don't, I don't understand the logic, um, I, but I mean what a minor detail that is. That's that's the lettering on the box. You know, if I've got to pick up in anything, that, that's all I can pick them up on. Um, as far as the camcorder itself is concerned, it is fantastic. Uh, I had a friend who is a DP and uh, John Agnew and he came down today and had a look at it and he was blown away by it. He thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, he brought a, a, a Canon a wide angle lens with him. It was about 30, it actually cost the same as this camcorder, about 13,000 pounds. And uh, two, obviously two third, two third inch, popped it on and uh, you know, the pictures were fantastic. So, you know, people like John, he, he's he, same as myself, V-Lock battery, we've already got them. And uh, so there's no more expense as far as that's concerned. Um, well, obviously in this case, I don't have two third inch glass, so I would need to buy the one with the glass. Um, John's got the two third inch glass, obviously, so he, he can buy it without the glass. Um, where's this going to find itself? It's going to find itself in the, the rental market, that's for sure. Now, the problem with the rental market is you're never going to be able to rent this because it's going to be out 24 seven. Everybody from broadcasters, to corporate, to commercials, whatever, they're all going to be renting this out. Because you've got to remember, straight out the back of this, you've got an HD SDI socket, and what you can do is take that into something like a nano flash. And instead of having your, 30, your 35 megabits a second S by X, you're now moving up to 50 megabits full broadcast spec, 100 megabits a second, 200 megabits a second, you name it, the nano flash can do it. And it's fully controllable. Um, with the camcorder itself. So you've now got a tool, not only have you got a camcorder that is full broadcast spec, but you've got the the back end um, going away from 35 megabits a second, taking it straight out to a nano flash, and basically the world's your oyster as far as megabits are concerned. So this camcorder, as I say, rental, broadcast, corporate, even commercials. Um, there's no reason why this camcorder shouldn't get into the uh, high-end commercials and even possibly high-end drama. Now, uh, I saw a 750 about four weeks ago and uh, it, it was lame compared to this. Um, if you put a 35mm, some decent glass, 35mm adapter and uh, your um, prime lens, this camera will, this camera would kick the pants out a 700 or a 750. Um, it is that good, I kid you not. Um, as far as shooting is concerned, uh, low light, fantastic, uh, virtually noiseless. This is one, I mean, I thought the X3, the, the S by X EX3 was fairly low noise, but this camera kicks the pants on the X3 and you're saying to yourself, wow, um, it really does, it has the wow factor and that's what you want when you bring a camcorder out. It looks apart and it performs and what that you can't ask any more, 10 out of 10 for Sony. Something big is happening downtown. Okay, let's do it. 
machine will have eyes, ears, and a voice.